today I'm going to take the risk, <laughs> very high risk, of sounding too repetitive in order to stress a point. And the point I'm trying to stress is that time reveals a lot. You know, instant coffee ili to kosea san. And because we live in a world of instant coffee and immediate Google results of information you're looking for, people expect the same with political developments. When something happens, people start complaining. Why isn't Kumekucha analyzing this? Kumekucha is too slow. And then other analysts rush in. <laughs> they rush in and make an immediate analysis of something that has just broken, news that has just broken. No, 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 no. Sometimes slow down and let time do its work. With time, usually most things become a lot clearer. And I'm not saying you wait for 10 years. <laughs> I'm not even saying you wait for months or weeks. No, just a few days and something becomes a lot clearer. Now, of course, there are instances where something will happen and immediate analysis are in order. Yeah, but uh, in my view, those are few. Now, the latest political developments in Kenya, yeah, that have been sorted out dramatically by time, that have been made much clearer by time, are as follows. The government introduces aggressive registration of Huduma number. Raila Odinga seems to be very heavily involved in promoting this Huduma number. Yeah, well, what we expected, as I said in an earlier video, was for him to advise the government, slow down, explain this to the people. And then even before we have recovered from that, there are reports that Raila is suggesting that Huduma number registration is made compulsory. And then even as we are reeling in shock over that statement, at about the same time, we are told that Raila Odinga and President Uhuru Kenyatta are set to make a tour together, a trip together, to China. And they don't even make it a secret what they're going to do. And they don't even do what many Kenyan uh, governments have done in the past. They don't even make any attempt to make their visit vague. You know, there are so many foreign trips, even uh, visits by foreign dignitaries, that the government deliberately makes the whole purpose and intention vague. Or we are going to discuss how we can strengthen relationships between the two countries. <laughs> Go tell that to the birds. But in this latest case, they have made it crystal clear. They are going to negotiate for a loan of Kenya shillings. Wait for this one. 368 billion that will go towards completing the SGR from Naivasha to Narok to Bomet to Sondu to Kisumu and then ultimately to Busia, the border with Uganda. Now hold on a minute. One of the chief campaigning points of NASA in the 2017 elections was that the SGR was a ripoff. Yeah, it had cost too much. It had enriched people. It was not viable. Yeah, and you remember the champion of that was the NASA chief strategist and somebody who was very close to Ray Lauding at the time. Yeah, a man called Dr. David D. Now Ray is going to China to negotiate for more money when we are so heavily in debt and not only that for more money towards the project NASA condemned in the strongest terms possible the SGR hey yeah 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 what's going on here now before we go any further let me give you a critical clue very early on yeah when the Suduma number was launched I received information that the Huduma number is made in China. In other words, it is very, very closely linked to our financial relationship with China. It is linked to our mounting debt with China. Now, I didn't rush to make a video at the time. In fact, I remained mum even when many others linked, yeah, made that link, okay? Because in my view, 
<laughs> that is a very significant revelation. Not the kind of revelation to make when you only have one trusted source of information. Not the kind of revelation to make when time has not made things clearer. Well, today, from where I sit, time has made it crystal clear. Now, we're going to analyze that in great detail. Don't worry, I'll keep it as interesting as possible. <laughs> and then, apart from that, we're going to analyze something super interesting. Something very politically interesting. Yeah, It is SGR politics in the Rift Valley. Now, you'll notice the extension of the railway line from Naivasha to Busia yeah, a lot of it will pass through the Rift Valley. Narok and Bomet are in the Rift Valley. And even a small child living in Kenya today knows that our current politics is the Handshake Brigade versus the Rift Valley. Yeah, DP Ruto Camp. I think you now understand what I mean when I say it is very exciting explosive politics the politics of the SGR so get your cup of coffee get your popcorns or get your cold drink whatever you take and relax and let's break this down on my part I promise to keep the ay yeah 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 to a minimal <laughs> I will try my best because the truth is, in this story, there are very many ayayayas. Too many. Ayayaya. <laughs> now, let us start by getting the contentious Huduma number out of the way. And by the way, spiritually, this Huduma number thing is huge, has very huge implications. Yes, it's not the mark of the beast, predicted, prophesied in the Bible. Yeah. However, it is a preparation, a key preparation to the introduction of the mark of the beast. Yeah, most people believe that. I too believe that. The significant spiritual thing is that you need to ask yourself a simple question. Why should such a small country such an insignificant country in the world community as Kenya is, find itself at the forefront of promoting something, yeah, like the Huduma number, which will lead, yeah, not today, not tomorrow, but in the future, which will lead to the mark of the beast. In my view, it is a confirmation, yeah, that to God, as far as God is concerned, Kenya is going to play a very significant role yeah, in the end times predicted in the Bible centuries ago. And that significant role will involve spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, being a launching pad for a great revival on earth yeah, before the coming of Christ. You cannot receive a bigger confirmation than what is unfolding in Kenya right now. Why do I say this? Because whenever the enemy of God sees that God is about to do something, they come in and try and frustrate and block and put obstacles on that big major thing that God is going to do. Yeah, that obviously is going to be a great devastation to the kingdom of the enemy. Because there's no way Kenya is going to be the springboard of revival when all the citizens of Kenya already have the real mark of the beast on them. That can never happen. That is the biggest revelation I've come across in a very long time. Those who are wise, take note. And let's continue. It is now clear that the government of Kenya has no alternative, has no choice, has no other option but to very aggressively promote the Huduma number. Because the Huduma number yeah, cannot be divorced, is in fact very closely linked with the relationship of the Kenya government and its key yeah, partner in development, China. 
funding for the extension of the SGR will never go through unless the assurances that the Huduma number will be implemented fully. You know one of the lesser talked secrets of the massive Chinese growth yeah, is the equivalent of a Huduma number in China, which put bluntly is massive spying on each and every citizen of that huge, very populous country. You cannot get another bigger guarantee of successful growing collection of government revenue and even economic growth of the country because it gives you complete control over every single citizen of the country, yeah, including even those who are not yet in the workforce, six-year-olds. And so if you had dreams of putting pressure on the Kenyan government to abandon the Huduma number, <laughs> forget it. The only way you can do it is by severing relationship between Kenya and China completely and then coming up with the billions we owe that country yeah, and paying it off on behalf of Kenya. And then we'll be free. And then we can discuss abandoning the Huduma number. That is the truth. And nothing short of that will stop the Huduma number. Yeah. So quit postponing. Go and register for your Huduma number. Because anyway, there's nothing, absolutely nothing, you'll be able to do yeah, to avoid taking the Huduma number. So you might as well get on with it. Which is what makes the statement attributed to Raila Odinga, His Excellency Raila Odinga, rather strange. He said that the Uduma number should be made compulsory. The reason why that is very strange is that the Uduma number, in case you didn't know, is already compulsory. Of course, the official government statement is that no, this thing is not being forced on Kenyan people. But what are you going to do when you need to enroll your son or your daughter into Standard 1 for next year? Yeah, and you're told it can't be done without a Huduma number, without your six-year-old having a Huduma number. What are you going to do when you need to urgently travel, yeah, and you need to renew your passport, and then the people at immigration tell you there's no way it can be done without a Huduma number? What are you going to do, yeah, when and if, God forbid, you run into serious financial problems and you need to sell your piece of land? And the land's office tells you it is impossible for that land to be transferred without a Huduma number. The answer to those questions is very simple. You'll rush out and get a Huduma number. So don't tell me a Huduma number is not compulsory. It is. Unajua kizungu ilikuja na meli. So sometimes language can be complicated. Yeah, somebody might tell you one thing using kizungu mingi. And you get confused. But let's stick to the bare basics. Let's cut to the chase. The Uduma number is compulsory. And that is why I find the statement attributed to His Excellency Raila Odinga strange. It is like a woman saying, He should be my husband, when the man is already her husband. Now let's move on to something else that's related to what we have just discussed. Many people who understand Raila Odinga will know that throughout his political career, Raila Odinga does not do anything yeah, that will mess him up politically. Everything he does is designed to build him up politically. Raila Odinga is a giraffe. He sees far. Like him or hate him, yeah, whatever your view on him is, there is no doubt, absolutely no doubt, that Raila Odinga is a politician without comparison in Kenya at the moment. That is the truth. And so, it would appear very strange for Raila Odinga to support the Huduma number, something which uh, there is growing opposition to, even amongst the public, yeah, amongst voters, amongst his supporters. But if you just step back a little and try and look at the bigger picture, then it all starts to make sense. The extension of the SGR will go through the Rift Valley. Yeah, and Raila Odinga will take credit, as well as President Huru Kenyatta, for the massive development that will be witnessed in the Rift Valley yeah, by the injection of the funds and the project of the SGR. 
Yeah, because the building of the railways will need supplies. Those workers on the ground will get jobs. And even if they're foreign workers, they'll need to be fed. They'll need supplies, etc., etc. The economy of the region through which the SGR will pass will grow tremendously. Now, you know the problem of the SGR between Mombasa and Nairobi is that a lot of that area is very much underdeveloped. And therefore, supplies were coming all the way from Nairobi. Supplies were coming from all the way from Mombasa. So the people in the middle benefited, yes, but the, the benefits they received were minimal. Nothing compared to the benefits the people of uh, Western Kenya, yeah, the people of Narok, Bomet, Sondu, Kisumo, Busia, etc., etc., will receive as the SGR goes through their land. So the political benefits are already clear, yeah. And it also means, yeah, that Rift Valley politics will have to change, yeah. Because yes, they support uh, the DP Ruto camp. Yes, the DP Ruto camp has said so many bad things about Raila Odinga. Yes, everybody in the DP Ruto camp knows that the handshake team is the enemy. And that would include the president, President Uru Kenyatta. But what will they be forced to say when the benefits of the SGR reach the people on the ground? Game shot. Game over. <laughs> that's really what it is. And that's not all. When the SGR is complete, <laughs> things are going to completely change in that region of Kenya. Who travels up country frequently at the least excuse? To go for funeral, to go for planting, to go for a get-together, etc., etc. The largest group of people who do that in Kenya are people from the Luo community and people from the Luya community. And the SGR extension will serve those people. They will save a fortune in transport costs. Not only that, they can go home more frequently. Yeah, because three hours, four hours, pop, you're in Western. Four hours, pop, you're in Busia. What that means is that, for instance, if you stay in the farthest corner, yeah, maybe somewhere like Busia, you can take the late train on Friday evening and you'll have your supper at home in Go, Shags. And then on Monday morning, you can take the early train and you'll be at work as usual. <laughs> Yes. For anybody from Western who fully understands what I'm talking about, that is just mind-boggling. And remember, half of me comes from Western Kenya. And there are also financial benefits. The financial benefits of this year from Mombasa to Nairobi are limited to those with means, yeah, to the richer people. Families use this year in large numbers to go down to the coast for Easter. Many other Kenyans use it to quickly get to the coast to go and collect their car from the port, yeah, the car they've imported, or even to buy a car yeah, amongst the many dealers in Mombasa. Now, when you talk about Western Kenya, <laughs> the story is very different. It will benefit the small man. Small people making deals who need to transport their goods quickly from point A to point B, yeah, from wherever they are to Nairobi, or even not to Nairobi, between maybe Busia and Kisumu or Kisumo and uh, Bomet. In my view, if somebody wanted to make this year very beneficial, that railway should have started in Busia, working its way backwards, yeah, from Busia to Kisumo, to Nairobi, and then to Mombasa. The final stretch should have been Nairobi to Mombasa. That should not have been the first stretch to be built. But that is my view. Now that we have stopped dreaming and building our castles in the air, Let's get down to the critical business. Yeah, the bad news. Fact number one, we're still heavily indebted to China and to Chinese banks. Fact number two, the Kenyan government is desperate for cash. Indeed, the Kenyan government is operating at the moment from hand to mouth. And the reason is fact number one, heavy debts to China, which need to be repaid. Yeah, so that our repayments every month are very high, a lot of money. They take away money from a lot of other things, a lot of other development projects that should have been happening. And now that Raila Odinga has gotten involved 
yeah, is bang in the middle of the financial arrangements of the government, <laughs> is at very high risk. You'll remember a man called David D was asked if he was appointed finance minister by the Jubilee government, would he accept the appointment to sort out the messes he's talking about firsthand? David Ndee's answer? No! No way! And the reason is very simple. Yeah, when somebody has made a big mess, yeah, especially if you're involved in politics, when somebody else, another government has made a big mess, it is not a good idea to get involved in that mess, even if you're trying to sort it out. Because in the end, when things backfire, you will be included in the mess. And so wisdom demands that those who caused the mess in the first place sort it out. They sort out their own mess. And then when they have sorted it out, they can now discuss bringing you in <laughs> when it is sorted out. This is the huge political risk His Excellency Raila Odinga has thrown himself into. And don't forget the aggressive collection of taxes and government revenue that is to unfold in Kenya shortly, I mean it's already happening but it'll get worse, yeah, will cause a backlash amongst the people. That one you can take to the bank. And I'm talking about a political backlash. And don't tell me Kenyans are cowards. Don't tell me Kenyans are not united. Because even the most cowardly dog, if you push it to a corner, you're going to be surprised, you're going to be shocked, and you're going to get uh, bitten by this dog which was cowardly before. Just ask yeah, the former president of Sudan, al-Bashir. Sudan has always been very divided, yeah, along tribal, clan, you know, Arabs versus the rest, etc., etc. Yeah. But what's happening today? All of them are united in one voice. All of them united in one voice and throughout Omar al-Bashir. And I know I've joked before on this channel that it was all about bread, which is true. Yeah, but the bigger picture is this. People who have been pushed into a corner, people who have got nothing more to lose, <laughs> those are very dangerous people to any regime. And I'm not a prophet of doom, but that is exactly where Kenyans are being pushed. Bear in mind that with all the good things that will come with the extension of this year, there will be many livelihoods lost. Many people lose jobs. Not immediately, because that will be contradicting what I've told you earlier. Yeah, But after the SGR starts operating. If you don't believe me, just ask the people of Mombasa. They thrived and boomed when the SGR was being built. But when it started operating, ay, yeah, 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 very many people went out of business. Very many bus companies yeah, cut down on their staff. And so my verdict, yeah, my opinion on the extension of the SGR to Western Kenya is that it is good, <laughs> but it is also not good. Development is necessary. Yeah, however, one has to be very careful if you're a government to manage the change that comes with it. And if the government of Kenya is going to manage that change yeah, with the extension of the SGR, in the same way they managed the change, massive changes, yeah, that came about with the commissioning of the SGR from Mombasa to Nairobi. <laughs> then folks, we're in trouble. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekucha.